Um, I think there is this tendency to take for granted that academic papers have all been vetted and peer-reviewed and so forth so that we, we have confidence that the research is solid, not necessarily perfect, but solid, and, and we tend to believe that other researchers have read these papers and they try to pick them apart and you know so make sure that they're they're you know they're rigorous and mm -hmm. that, that all the T's have been crossed and the I's and dotted. Scientific method, all that. The stuff, scientific right, method, right, all of that, mm -hmm. and all of this is to uh, you know is is to lead to published research that we can rely on, at least rely on as much as possible, given you know the nature of, of research. There's always some some doubt in there. So the Georgia Tech article on one in five materials chemistry papers may be wrong, one in five, <laughs> caught our attention. A new study that compared the results reported in thousands of papers published about the properties of uh, uh, materials used for carbon dioxide adsorption found that one in five, 20%, had results far beyond the error bars normally used to evaluate study results. Thousands of research papers yielded just nine compounds for which four or more independent studies allowed appropriate comparison of the results. Professor uh, David Scholl at Georgia Tech School of Chemical and Bio Biomolecular Engineering said this, at a fundamental level, I think people in materials chemistry feel that things are reproducible and that they can count on the results of a single study. But what we found is that if you pull out any experiment at random, there's a chance, there's a one in five chance that the results are completely wrong. Not just slightly off, but not even close. Wow. <laughs> one in five is like completely, like, like just the results are just like nonsense, right? They don't make sense huh. at all, right? Interesting. Okay. Now the problem with that is you say, well, who cares, right? Now in some part, in some research, you know, uh, uh, you know, theoretical research, that kind of stuff, the impact of this maybe is annoying. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about materials properties that companies rely on to make decisions. So, you know, the problem is that <clears throat> You may have, uh, you know, a company may, may rely on maybe one or two studies to choose a material that they think is right for their particular application. But if the odds are only one in five <laughs> that the study they look at, that the one in five that the study they look at is wrong, mm. they have pretty good odds of choosing a material that doesn't work for them, which huh. obviously means that it sends them down the wrong road and who knows how far down they get into, into their development before they realize Hey, this is just this complete garbage. Yeah. And, you know, this is costly, right? Yeah. And people are depending on this. Mm -hmm. This isn't just researchers. This is companies going out, finding a paper to make a materials decision, and then making a decision based on that paper, thinking that everybody's done their job, right? Right, okay. right, right. Okay, now, whether the results can be more broadly applied to other areas of material science awaits additional studies, said Scholl, but the results of this study, which was supported by the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, were published uh, November 28th, 2017 in the ACS journal Chemistry of Materials. Uh, so you can look this up and get more detail on it. Now, the study is related to material science, but I think there is a broader warning here. When you base a design decision, or a management decision, or a financial decision, or whatever kind of decision, based on one piece of research, one data point that hasn't been duplicated, and that's kind of a key point, you may be taking a serious risk. What you want, if you're, if you're looking at research to make your decisions, what you want is research that has been verified by other studies, or research where the methodology has been duplicated and gotten the same results. So you either want other people have looked at the same thing, conducted their own experiments, uh, different experiments, come up with basically the same results, or they have taken your experiment and duplicated it. Because usually in academic papers, they give you the methodology, they give you everything right. so that you can go out and duplicate the same study. Mm -hmm. So you want to see that other people have done that same study the same way and come up with the same result. If you just base things on one data point, no matter what it is, yeah. one research paper, what do you got? You yeah. don't know. And, you know, and me as a complete amateur, not even not even really all that well studied of an amateur in this, this field, one of five doesn't really seem that outrageous to me. I mean, understanding a little bit about how research works, I mean, they're not saying that this research is an ironclad finding. It's saying our research indicates, generally speaking, right? I mean, it's research, it's not. Well, it, it depends. In this particular case, 
they they are these papers re reporting the res the 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 chemical capabilities of a material, and that's not. So it was it wasn't theoretical. It's theoretical, like, not, not theoretical. It's like this material does, does this. this, and the fact is that it didn't. <laughs> so is that? I mean, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but is that is, is the is the intent here that this was just a mistake? That that uh, that it was sloppy science. That the, sloppy. Edi the editors it, didn't take enough it, it was look at it. Yeah, it was I mean, sloppy. Who, the blame is, is on the researchers themselves. Well, um, the uh, the blame on the researchers and the blame on uh, although I don't think he goes into this a lot. Usually, academic papers are supposed to be peer, peer reviewed, reviewed yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. So there is some. I think there's plenty of blame to go around. But also, honestly, just like we said, I said at the end here, some of the blame relies on if you're going to use research. Yeah. Don't use one piece of research. I mean, I don't know if you remember this. This was quite a while ago. Remember the whole cold. Fu this is a good example of when it's done right. Remember, there was the whole. I think it was the Japanese, the Chinese said they had done. Some scientists had done cold fusion. I, this yes, was like ten years I ago or something that. like right, that. Right. And they published the paper. Yeah. They published how they did it, how they mm -hmm. got the results, the whole thing. Nobody was able to duplicate it. Right. So that is what's supposed to happen. Is you're supposed to say, okay. Let's see if we can duplicate this. Well, it wasn't duplicated, so then, then you know, uh, people started speculating. Well, you know, th you know, there there was a problem with their setup. Uh, you know, they started picking apart to say, well, why did they get those results? Obviously, there was something went wrong mm -hmm. in the experiment because nobody's been able to to duplicate it, right? That's when it's done right, mm -hmm. and that's what you're looking for. As somebody taken this, if somebody had said, oh, great, they've done cold fusion, now we're going <laughs> to run off and we're going to you know design a product right. around this. <laughs> with just that one finding. With just that one finding. Down <laughs> they, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good, good stuff there, Dirk. Yeah. Thank you, man.